Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hingham School Committee meeting of December 2nd. Thanks for being out here on this raining, turning into slow snow night. Um, please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised by Harbor Media. If anyone is in the audience who intends to audio or video record the meeting, could you let me know now? Seeing none, all right, thank you. Um, item number two, approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve, uh, Long Range Planning Subcommittee and School Committee meeting from November 16th and the meeting of November 18th. Someone want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes of the Long Range Planning Subcommittee and the School Committee meeting held on November 16th, 2019. Second. Wait, I'll wait. second. Oh. Oh. Uh, 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 yep. So, um, on item three, which uh, is for the 16th. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, in the third sentence. The school committee and board of selectmen. That one. Yeah. Yep. So number three. So the third sentence. It says. It says. Currently says the new Beale Street development was contingent on one million specifically for the PRS windows. Um, that's may have been misunderstood. Um, so I'm proposing to change that to the Beale Street development agreement with the town included $1 million specifically for the PRS windows. Okay. All right. So that it's a little more clear. Yeah. There's nothing about a contingent. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Um, any other comments or discussion on these minutes? No. All right, thanks, Liza. Do we want to approve with that As change? As amended. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Approved. All right. Look, Carlos, go right I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on November 18, 2019. Second. I'll second. Thanks, Libby. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Great. Thank you. All right, item number three is uh, questions and comments. The, the committee encourages community engagement and we welcome questions and comments at the beginning of this meeting. Um, I will not sp speak at all unless there's anyone here tonight with something to add that's not on the agenda. All right, seeing none, then we will move on to superintendent's report, Dr. Austin. Thank you very much. I will, uh, I'll be brief tonight. Um, just a quick update on my um, new superintendent induction program, my goals. I continue my quest by meeting with lots and lots of people and asking lots of questions um, regarding their thoughts about Hingham Public Schools and uh, get great responses and I'm getting closer, ever closer to uh, finalizing my uh, thoughts and then beginning to write them and uh, prepare that for that February 24th meeting with all of you. Um, I'll present that. So uh, we're getting close to the end. Most of my work um, in November uh, focused on my school visits, which I continue to do. I, I have every month uh, I visit all the schools for a, a set period of time, working with the principals to ensure high quality instruction, <laughs> etc. cetera. Uh, I continue to work through that process um, as well as continue to watch their goals. And, and it's a way for me to, to continually monitor their progress towards goals and the school's goals, um, working on that. And I would say I also um, met with um, a couple of different groups this month to go over uh, particularly induction uh, questions, um, but to hear concerns about the school, et cetera. Um, one was the all-town PTO uh, and, and doing that work uh, with them. And I met with a group of teachers who are also residents of the town and have children in the schools uh, who requested a meeting uh, specifically to uh, just uh, discuss their thoughts about the school system, which was very profitable. I enjoyed that very much. So uh, we continue to, to learn much from the residents of the town of Hingham. Uh, and I thank them for their time. I would also say I had a um, you know wonderful time. I, I, I'd want to mention um, the uh, presentation of Mamma Mia this last week was <coughs> phenomenal, uh, and I want to congratulate uh, the school for doing that. I, I really enjoyed myself uh, watching that and. Uh, 
just it was absolutely uh, astounded with the, uh, the 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 wonderful talent that's out there, uh, as well as all the volunteers who are working to to help behind the scenes. So I congratulate them on that. And uh, other than that, we we stay pretty busy. Um, I also have my, I'm sorry, I had the facility, facility report, report after that. Yeah. Um, the facilities uh, report is, is, is quite lengthy, um, but I'll, I'll go through as much as uh, we can here. Um, what's been done in November, the initial design of the uh, PRS Festival uh, project uh, to be developed by Habib Associates under, under the Capitol uh, has been completed. Um, the initial design anyway. The high school science wing uh, gas line repairs continue uh, in discussion with the science department and principal. The majority of the system classrooms, um, the, the work has continued. We expect all issues to be resolved with a full report by the middle of December. Um, we had some issues with the gas lines and they're continuing to repair those. Um, stream, uh, the, the steam stra trap survey completed the foster school and a number of defective stream, uh, steam traps were identified and repaired so we're still doing some work at foster. Um, Massachusetts DPS annual evaluate um, elevator inspections will be performed at the high school this month. Um, two variable frequency drive systems will be installed at the South School heating pump system pumps. Uh, rooftop units uh, number two and seven at the high school have been upgraded to a new demand control ventilation system. The high school system uh, boiler number one experienced a forced shutdown due to a water leak from the rear tube sheet. This has been a problematic leak experience, but I believe it's been fixed now. And they're working on boiler two now, correct? Boiler two had an accident that yeah had a, um, a repair today. It's actually going to get it tomorrow. It's developed an underbelly leak, right. um, pretty sizable. So boiler two has been shut down. Boiler one, fortunately, is working, and then uh, they're working. Uh, maintenance is working on a contingency plan so that if we were to lose both boilers at the same time, we'd be able to roll on a donkey boiler for making sure that we have heat until we get the boilers fixed. And many of you, some of you, may have been here several years ago when we had a significant leak in boiler number one. There was a belly leak, and we got that repaired. It's about seven years ago. It was a it was a big job. It was like a forty thousand dollar job. But at that time, we thought that we might need to do you know get replacement boil, uh, boilers, and so we sort of like uh, contemplated, or we we I investigated an accelerated repair through MSBA to sort of get pricing. You know, and if we had to replace boilers, the high school would be a, a million dollar plus project. Um, but, you know, Doug still thinks that these boilers can be repaired. The big question will be there's an inspector from Hartford Boilers that has to inspect all boiler repairs. Um, you know, and, and so long as they think, yep, yeah, you could do this repair and it could be safe, then everything should be okay. This one is planned to be, it'll be rewelded tomorrow and it should, you know, be up and running again um, by tomorrow. But um, we're working on this contingency plan just in case, you know, we were to lose both boilers at the same time. The boiler number one, that repair that was on boiler number one actually has happened, happened again a couple of years ago. So it's the same place where it's leaking, you know, so these things are sort of repeating themselves. Um, but anyways, it's, it's, it's doable, it's a repair, it'll, it'll get up and running. Um, you know, we're not in any dire straits or any emergency situation, but you know, we have, um, we will make plans to make sure that we can uh, continue to generate the uh, heat for the building should both boilers go down at the same time. High school is getting up there in age, you know, and, that, and it's got a ventilation system down on the bottom with, down in the basement with crawl space. Um, and, you know, so you, you got that exposed pipe that's underneath there too, which, you know, could be subject to rust and it could have similar steam trap issues like Foster had. Um, not that it's 50, 60 years old, but, you know, it's, it's all time to, like, you have to, like, really do some heavy-duty preventative maintenance on these things, which are really costly things, right? In other words, you know, you, you, like, for example, you, if you, the high school would foster, we wanted to put in $35,000, change out some of the pipes at the high school, well, you know, $100,000. Let's go in and, and change out some of the pipes. So, you know, as the buildings get older, you come up with these bigger, bigger, um, bigger and bigger repairs and of course you know we're always restricted by the amount of capital um, that we get and you know we had a long-range planning committee meeting tonight and I'm sure Carlos will give an update later. John, do you, do you
do we try to run both boilers ideally at the same time? They uh, they do operate at the same time. I think they cycle. I, I think they cycle, and I'm not sure how that cycling happens. Okay. But they're always on together. You know, in this type of weather, with you know, it's 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 not like frigid, freezing cold yet. So one yeah. boiler can, um, you know, one boiler could carry the building, even in a cold, cold spell. You yeah. don't want that because if you have problems with that boiler, then you're really going to be sunk. Um, but. Yeah, they, 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 it's not like we turn one on and we turn one off. They run in cycle, and I think they sort of alternate on which one's uh, doing the, the lion's share of the work. Well, we are hopeful that uh, we believe that that will be fixed tomorrow, so we'll have Boiler 2 up and running um, before too long and, and, and repaired. Um, one of the things I would say, I, I mean, I would encourage you to read the facility report. It's lengthy. They do a tremendous amount of work. Um, we are now shifting... Uh, and I can't say enough about uh, Katie and Doug that, that work really hard. Uh, I enjoy talking to them at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now they're uh, thinking about how we open up our schools and making sure that schools are ready to be um, entered as, as we now are in a, in a snow and ice position. So uh, I appreciate their work, and I, and I know they're working hard. And, and uh, this, this report is really proof of that, what they get done, an amazing amount in, in a month's time. So I encourage you to read that. Um, all right. Um, communications. Do you have any communications, Dr. Austin? I had no communications. No. All right. Then Emma Quilty with student communications. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed their Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving break, many seniors finished their applications to college. The drama club sold out all three nights of Mama Mia, and Miss Pollard was announced the teacher of the month. Uh, the Mama Mia production was unbelievable, as Dr. Paul Austin said. Um, and to celebrate, Miss Levy Sisk won the Stuco, Stuco fundraiser of the most feathers on her picture in lunch. And so she got to wear the turkey costume on Wednesday before break. <laughs> um, the senior class put together a pep rally representing all the fall sports teams, including the dance team performing with the senior boys on the football team. On Thanksgiving, the football team played Situate, and Christian Julian received the MVP Coach Paul Killinger Trophy. This award honors a man whose spirit continues to inspire people on and off the field. Claire Schnorr, a senior at the high school, signed her national letter of intent um, before Thanksgiving break to attend the Navy Academy for rowing and to serve our country. Um, 28 Hingham High School students were accepted into the Massachusetts Music Educators Association Southeastern Senior District Music Festival, where 13 of them receive recommendations to audition for the MMEA All-State Music Festival. With many Hingham High School alumni home, many came together to show their Hingham spirit and visited teachers, attended the football game, and played in an alumni games. At the Boys Lacrosse Alumni Game, the former coach and HHS player, John Ledwick, who died this past fall, was recognized by John Todd and the players. The Student Council plans to help decorate downtown for the holidays and help at Christmas in the Square, also helping the Hingham Women's Club at the Festival of the Trees. And I hope everyone is enjoying this nasty weather. I know us seniors will be wearing our pajamas inside out and putting a spoon under our pillow in hopes of a snow day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> was that That's a hope for the seniors. snow day, was it? <laughs> 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 you, you, you may get lucky tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> I, I got a request from home, too. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's right. Inside out pajamas. <laughs> Should I call you first at 3.30? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let Emma know first. She's the student representative. She yeah. should know. <laughs> All right, um, sections, uh, item six, unfinished business. Uh, 6.1 is to receive and sign the 2019-2020 school committee operating protocols that we voted on at our last meeting. So in the interest of time, you've all already signed it. So the operating protocols are in place. So thank you, everyone. Um, and then item number seven, new business. Uh, 7.1, to receive the Hingham High School Improvement Plan for 2019-20 and an update on the 2018-2019 plan progress and act as appropriate 
Hello, Mr. Swanson, the principal of Hingham High School. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. I was tempted to just turn this over to Emma Quilty. She does such a good job uh, yeah, speaking about the she's, high school. Right. <laughs> but she's sneaking out. And, uh, won't have she to covered do it that. Up. But uh, I'd like to thank her for the great tip of wearing the pajamas inside out. I'll share that with my children tonight as well. It's not only the seniors who are hoping for a snow day. I'm sure it's all four grades, lots of the faculty, <laughs> maybe some of the administrators too. Uh, we will see. Um, so, Dr. Austin, thank you for loading the, I'm the close. slides up here for me. And I think we've got a clicker here. It gets there. Okay, we'll see if it, if it actually works. I think we're very close now. There you are. Okay, thank you very much, and, and uh, it's an honor to be here. As, as always, delivering what I think will be the final school improvement plan uh, out of the six that you've heard this fall, because I think all four elementary schools and the middle school have, have already presented. And uh, it will be my pleasure to share with you a review of uh, the 2018-2019 school year with a particular focus on our school improvement goals. Our school council developed uh, last year and again this year just four goals and uh, of course that's a tiny sliver really of what we work on at the high school but these four uh, goals were a particular focus for us last year I'll begin by reminding you that it was not an easy year uh, at the high school there's a photograph that was taken on May 19th I think of last year when the service master uh, vans rolled in after the uh, infamous great fire of 2019 and so although it was not an easy year uh, it was a good one. There's a photograph taken just about a week after that fire, and you would hardly know that anything bad had happened in the school just a week earlier. There are some of our two class of 2019 graduates uh, donned in, in what we might call historic attire because for the first time they were all wearing red robes. Uh, you might recall that discussion from about a year ago. And um, we're at the point now where uh, into the fall of 2019, we can't even laugh about that fire. There's a photograph taken on Halloween when our social studies department decided that uh, Mr. Woolley, whose classroom was the site of the fire, would dress as a VCR. <laughs> and <laughs> the rest of the uh, a VCR that's on fire, as you can tell from the flames on his head, and uh, his, the rest of his colleagues in the social studies department would dress as members of the fire department. Uh, so we, that's the last we want to hear about the fire ever. So there, there it is. Um, and I'll start now with a, a quick overview of our four school improvement goals from last year. The first of which was to systematically review school security policies and recommend measures to enhance school safety. Probably goes without saying that this is really a, an important goal each and every year, always. Um, and, and I do think we can say that the goal was completed last year, but of course remains a constant and ongoing focus for us um, at the high school. We did complete a systematic review of all security protocols. It was part really of a district-wide review, and, and I was able to participate in a committee last year uh, chaired by John Ferris uh, and attended by administrators from throughout the district as well as members of the police and fire department. And I think all of you were there last January when we had the district-wide uh, forum over at the middle school as well. But at the high school level, we um, initiated a brand new building level security committee that met uh, four or five times last year, has met twice again this year, and will continue to, to meet as a permanent school-based security committee into the future. Uh, that group reviewed all of our school protocols, and uh, I could point to probably a, f a few specific steps that we took in addition to reviewing all of our protocols, we, um, we conducted some new trainings for our faculty. We developed a new kind of cheat sheet of our, of our big bound uh, security manual that gets the essential points down onto one sheet of paper uh, and is now in the top drawer of every teacher's desk. Um, and, and that has proven very helpful as well. Last year, we, uh, we expanded our school emergency response team to include our athletic director, both of our nurses, our school psychologist, uh, got radios with all of those people as well. Uh, so I think that enhances our security. Um, all of them are also members on our, our school-based security team. Uh, that group also includes a number of faculty members. Um, 
we uh, did a, an audit of the whole building in which we identified the safe zones in every classroom, labeled them, and used them in some uh, series of drills, including a drill that we had never run before at the high school, which was a, um, a, uh, excuse me, a lockdown drill during passing time. So to see how, how well could we handle security, uh, a security emergency if it were to happen during the four minutes in between classes. We had never done that at the high school before. Uh, we did it last December for the first time, and I think to good effect. One of the things we discovered was the inadequacy of our PA system to be heard very well in the hallways. And you may recall, too, that was a budget request for us last year that we, we were happy to see um, was funded. And the work on our PA ha has begun, and we believe it's going to be completed over the Christmas vacation as well, uh, another important step toward better security for the building. Uh, we also have in our, in our budget this year another recommendation of um, our security team, which was to do some rekeying at the high school as well. Um, and, and so altogether, I, I think we've taken some important steps forward in bolstering the security of the building. So uh, that was school improvement goal number one. Number one is to explore, or number two, to explore the possibility of expanding the freshman advisory program in order to better serve ninth grade students and potentially also serve students in other grades. This goal is in progress and actually is now school improvement goal number one for the current school year. We'll see it again uh, in the 2019-2020 school year. We feel uh, confident in a model that we have had for a number of years, our current freshman advisory model, uh, and believing that it makes a positive impact on our school, but uh, since its inception has only served ninth grade students. Uh, this photograph shows um, upper class volunteers welcoming our freshmen at their <coughs> orientation when they meet their advisors for the first time. And, and that program serves students throughout their ninth grade year. They meet once or twice a month throughout their freshman year, but then not again. And, and we have recognized ourselves and we've also been rem reminded by NEASC on our most recent accreditation where, in which they listed it as an important focus area uh, for us as well, that we could do more. Uh, we have already expanded the mentoring program uh, as a way to strengthen uh, our freshman advisory, but we also recognizing that we need something more. And so you, you see an image here of a faculty workshop that happened during our first professional development session earlier this year. This was in October where our entire faculty had an opportunity to participate in um, an in-depth discussion about some alternative models uh, that might be adopted in the future. We heard from a couple of our students, one of whom is pictured there um, as, as a way to hear from student uh, interest as well. And so this will remain an ongoing focus area for us uh, throughout the year ahead. We were hopeful that by the end of this year, we'll be able to recommend a model that would allow for the expansion of our freshman advisory program, potentially um, including some schedule change. Uh, we have a workshop that's happening on uh, Wednesday of this week where members of our uh, high school advisory task force will be continuing that work. It's, uh, it's a complicated question, but one that we're very hopeful about uh, in terms of developing a model that will better serve our students. Uh, our third uh, school improvement goal from last year was to consider avenues for bolstering civics education across the curriculum. This goal is in progress and remains a part of our vision, even if it's not specifically you know, repeated as a school improvement goal for this year. It remains uh, important uh, ongoing work. And in fact, on, um, on our next uh, school council meeting later this week, our social studies director will be meeting with our school council as well to continue that discussion. Some of the specific action steps that we had listed for last year uh, included um, some efforts at a voter registration drive, which was quite successful. There's a photograph from it uh, from last year. And uh, we know that we can capitalize on a great spirit of service that already exists at our school, whether it's our student council raising money for uh, this year their, their focus area, which is the Allison Clark Memorial Scholarship Foundation and so many other examples of students, whether in teams or clubs, confronting real issues. Here you see members of our track team who attended the Jane Doe conference last year, um, focused on ending gender-based violence. They actually would be attending that conference again later this month. Um, and a whole variety of clubs, whether our Red Cross Club 
striving to make a real difference uh, here. And, and last year had the f held the first ever Bloodmobile, um, or at least first in recent memory at the high school, and had their second one this fall. Um, our, our green team, thinking globally and acting locally, uh, I think captures that spirit so well. Um, our cafeteria as well, and our botany club. You see our food service director there, Kim Smith, and some members of our botany club on the right who continue to move the school closer and closer to being, I think, one of the more sustainable high schools in the area. The famous, um, and do we see Emma in that, in that picture? Yeah, I think we do. Um, the girls' soccer team has one of every one of our athletic teams at, at some point in the year. Uh, leads this, the, I think we've been going seven or eight years now, the slash the trash competition, reducing waste in the cafeteria, um, where our student athletes strive for perfection and even sometimes achieve it. There's our dance team, which again last year uh, repeated a record they had set the year before of achieving zero uh, waste in the cafeteria, at least anything that could have been composted or recycling. So, so many good examples. Uh, including last year's uh, 11th annual teach-in on environmental issues. There's our green team advisor, Mr. Woolley. Um, as the school continues to earn the green ribbon uh, that it initially earned in 2015, one of a small handful of schools in Massachusetts that has achieved that honor, uh, and particularly at the high school level. Uh, last year, uh, another example, members of our Harbor Light staff won awards in student journalism. Again, a great example of engagement. Uh, that I think connects with this goal of civics education. Uh, a brand new kindness club that was initiated last year and has established a really terrific partnership with Foster Elementary School. A uh, long list of incredible projects that this club, under the direction of one of our math teachers, Sarah Jacobson, has accomplished uh, and, and really had gained quite a bit of recognition to the point where they were invited to the State House last spring to be honored uh, by our, our state rep and state senator. Uh, really capturing that spirit, again, of civic engagement and of working to make a difference. Um, students at the high school in so many ways engaged in this community, and there's a picture taken just a couple of weeks ago, uh, student athletes who had worked in the 50 Flags campaign to help raise funds for the 4th of July parade. And again, last spring, the third annual Harborman Helping Hingham uh, program showing that this engagement is really happening on a large scale. So we, we had about 95% of the senior class engage in a community service project uh, somewhere uh, within the town uh, of Hingham. And here, most recently, uh, uh, Liza here with, with this standing room only crowd in, in our library uh, as part of the envisioning Hingham's future um, and, and contributing, uh, not just envisioning, but our goal is to uh, contribute as well. So we, we have lots of confidence in, in the steps that are likely to happen as we move forward with this goal to expand civics education in a more formal way throughout our curriculum. And this is, uh, again, in response to new legislation that was signed just about a year ago by Governor Baker that um, challenges every uh, middle school and high school in Massachusetts to ensure that all students participate in some kind of a civic project um, at some point uh, in, in, while they're at the school. So that law has not yet gone into effect, although it was signed a year ago, goes into effect in 2020. And uh, so the work that remains to be done for us is to, to build on this clear uh, spirit and ethos of service and civic engagement uh, that is clearly I think a part of almost all of our students' experiences to get ourselves to the point where it's true for all of them, not just for most, but for all of our students that they're engaged in some sort of meaningful civics project uh, and helps us to move closer to, to really fulfilling the mission of our school. Our fourth and final school improvement goal from last year is to explore ways to expand service learning opportunities for Hingham High School students. Similar in spirit, I think, in some ways to the previous goal, it's in progress and remains a focus for us. This goal, our discussion about this goal at uh, the school council level was inspired initially by um, talk about se several of the recent service learning uh, trips that have happened internationally at the high school. And, and last March, for the third time, we sent a group to the Dominican Republic for what was really an incredible learning experience for those students. And again, replicated, uh, you know, as we had said in the previous goal, by lots of the projects that we see in Hingham High School clubs. 
Uh, here's an example of some of the great work our Veterans Appreciation Club continues to do. Uh, Environmental Botany Club or Green Team continuing to do in things like the Green Apple Day of Service. Um, and the links that we're seeing increasingly between service and academics. Here's one of the most highly touted programs. It's now become a real annual tradition, the extreme couponing event that's underway right now. And you may have heard the call for your coupon. So if you still get the newspaper, please send in those flyers uh, for Ms. Jacobson and her math class. And uh, for anyone who's watching this too, you can do the same thing. Drop those off um, at the high school where our math students will use them to their greatest possible benefit to um, see how much food they can buy for $500. And, uh, and that food is all donated to the Hingham Food Pantry. Uh, incredible connections that are happening athletically where so many of our teams, uh, here the volleyball team honored for the work they had done in raising uh, money for Wicked Good Cause, in particular in breast cancer research. Um, and the links within, um, so again, service uh, as a part of our athletic program. Last year, in the second year of our uh, Special Olympics Unified uh, Athletics Program, not only a track team, but uh, this winter for the first time, a unified basketball team as well that has given uh, student athletes with and without intellectual disabilities an opportunity to participate and compete with each other. Um, some of the great moments of the past year since I delivered uh, this presentation a year ago um, included the, uh, the unforgettable experience about six weeks ago of our soccer team supporting Maddie's Promise and the work that continues to be done for NEFCURE, um, where we may say on some days that orange is the new red. Uh, we could say that purple is the new red as well, whether it was the NEFCURE fund um, uh, or the incredible night uh, on the soccer field a few weeks ago, uh, where the goal, the really ambitious goal of $50,000 raised for Maddie's Promise was accomplished with uh, work for people throughout the community, including terrific leadership from the high school, in particular our soccer uh, soccer athletes. Uh, that whole spirit of service learning in, uh, in sync with a new awards program that was inaugurated last year. And I wanted to particularly mention it here tonight and uh, remind you that if you're around on Thursday morning, please come out to the high school uh, for a morning uh, award ceremony where students who have been caught in random acts of kindness by a teacher will be honored uh, with the Andrew Warhoftig uh, Catching Kindness Award. And it's always one of my favorite moments uh, of the year. Hope we'll see some of you there on Thursday morning. And so 7 the right? 7 7.30 AM. So it's an early start to the day. Uh, but we'll feed you. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and you, will, you will leave, I promise you, with some genuine inspiration uh, as you hear the reasons why these 40 or so Hingham High School students are, are being honored. Uh, just a sentence or two is read about every one of them, uh, those sentences authored by a teacher or other staff member who has seen something very special in them uh, around the spirit of kindness and, and, and service. So, um, <laughs> yes, much, much more important and, and very well put, Michelle. So uh, thank you for that. So those were, those were our four uh, school improvement goals, focus areas for our school council last year. Uh, here are the goals that we're working on as we speak and continue to work through the current school year. The first is a repeat goal, uh, again, one that's right at the front of our thinking and uh, will be a focus area throughout the rest of this year. Our second goal, you know, it's just as last year we systematically reviewed our school security protocols. This year our school council felt as though it's, it may be time for us to systematically review our school graduation requirements. And you know, it's a link to a goal from last year as well around civics education. Uh, we believe that the ongoing concern for working a civics uh, project into the experience of our students and potentially a service learning project into the expectations for our students could figure into the systematic review of graduation uh, requirements as well. Our third goal is to bolster the cultural proficiency of Hingham High School students and staff. This is in keeping with a district-wide focus on, on equity and cultural profi proficiency as well. And finally, goal number four, to strengthen the school's commitment to and practice of environmental stewardship uh, as a core value. And uh, we look forward to working on those goals throughout the year ahead and continuing to move our school closer to reaching its full potential. 
So there it is, our goals from last year and our, our goals for this year. Thank you for, uh, for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions or hear any comments that you might have on any of that. Um, I did have a great presentation. Thank oh, you very thank much, you. Rick. My um, pleasure. Really great and really great work happening at the school. And it was interesting today because as I was looking through this and seeing the connection between freshman advisory and school security, I was just reading this research paper today, and it was from a security expert, and they said the biggest um, – prohibitor of violence in schools is students having someone in the school right. they're comfortable talking to right. like that's it metal detectors all that stuff it's some of those things are can make schools safe but not really the biggest indicator of safety in school is that students have someone they can talk to so kudos to you for thank you very getting much that. A, such an important point i think uh, schools where people feel connected mm -hmm. and where they're uh, they feel as though they have meaningful relationships with each other and and with the teachers yeah is probably the best way to keep ourselves safe yeah. uh, and happy. And happy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So right. thank you. Um, how the, the high, as the high school um, co you know, liaison to the school committee, um, I just want to say you know, it's been a pleasure being, you know, working with you uh, and your team. Um, and I commend you also with the program with the seniors providing services to the community. Um, there is uh, many towns now actually ad adopted that. They didn't have a program as such as that. How long has that program been around? Last you spring know? was was the third time that we've done the Harborman Helping Hingham program. Okay. And I, I will, uh, in the interest of transparency, uh, we have to give some credit to Marshfield because I think uh, we we were we drew a, a good deal of inspiration from what they do at Marshfield High School and, and adopted it to fit the needs of our own community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think we might have been the second one in, in the region to do something like this. And it's encouraging to hear that more schools are doing it. And um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. It's been very rewarding for the people who have been involved. And we hope that's a program that will continue to grow and, and I, I think will become really cherished tradition for a long time to come. That's awesome. That was great. Thank you, Carlos. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I have a couple. Thank you. Um, so, when you're talking about graduation requirements, um, I was wondering, you know, what was prompting it, which you answered it. Um, so there's civics legislation, but also keep in mind that the new education financing bill also has a requirement for personal finance right. education, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I know we do something with the seniors as a one-day program, but you may want to add that into your list. Uh, Absolutely, that, that's a great suggestion. In fact, that, that has entered into some of our school council conversations already. Um, there, there have been the, some people who have advocated for a greater focus on, um, as we had said, on civics education, but financial literacy mm -hmm. and, uh, and competence around those areas yeah. as well, uh, I think is, is completely worthy of our attention. So and you may want to have the administration check of what's in that legislation of what's right. going to be required mm -hmm. um so hopefully we'll get some more money from the state and can help fund these things but that would be good um the other thing on civics i saw an article recently about math teachers doing civics work of analyzing voter data and so similar to how we do digital literacy across the curriculum, right. there may be a way of integrating civics across the curriculum when, the, you know, looking at election results, right. trends, <coughs> gerrymandering, you know, those types of s statistics issues. So keep that Great suggestion. in mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, on the freshman advisory, um, so one topic that you may want to think about when you're thinking about cultural diversity too and mm. the red gowns of maybe we start calling those students first year students mm. instead of fresh men right um it's i've heard that in other institutions um it takes some adapting to right but being more neutral of terminology is something sure. um and then when you talk about with freshman advisory of knowing an adult and feeling comfortable with an adult, have you talked about allowing the students 
to have some choice in who that adult would be in their group discussion versus being assigned somebody that I, I've had this conversation um, with some st students about well what's the point of if I don't even know this adult but I have a teacher that I really like like if you gave me a choice of who would you feel comfortable going to I'd probably pick somebody that I actually know that I really like and so we got into a discussion about what's what's the purpose of this adult um, and so I was just curious if you touched on that of or if you were only thinking about oh, we're gonna group these kids together and just to assign an adult right no I think that that's a great point and and part of our discussion in looking at a whole variety of different models that are out there and um, I, I think in some ways is a, is a real advantage to us to not exactly be on the cutting edge of advisory. Oh, yeah. Most schools have an advisory program yeah. that is more comprehensive than ours. So I think we may be a little bit late to the game on this. Our, our freshman advisory program has been around long enough that it's given us a good understanding of how it can be done at that level. But we've got a lot of other great programs to look at at other schools that are serving the entire school. And we have come across quite a few others that offer a mix between an advisory and a flex block that do give students quite a bit of choice in terms of how they spend that time, and where they go, and who they spend that time with. So my hope is that we'll be able to satisfy some of those concerns and come up with a proposal that really maximizes the potential benefits of different approaches and, and allows for a high degree of choice for students as well. I think ideally that would be the best kind of program. And believe me, I totally acknowledge it's really complicated and yeah. it's way more complex than, than all of it. So, but it was, that was something that I'd had my own conversations about and we're curious. Right. So, Good point. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I, I had actually read some research on that too and I think part of it was the concept of the having like one formal advisor or mentor for a group of students was also just for those first year students to get them comfortable with mm -hmm. talking to an educator as not a teacher as a sort of a, sort of that power imbalance to sort of just make it more comfortable so that they might not be connecting with that particular teacher who is their mentor but now sort of start realizing like oh I can I can have a different relationship with the teachers now at the school so there's a little bit of that supposed to right. come out of that yeah yeah, yeah. Good. anything okay. else so I just wanted to commend the high, this high school and the schools in general for um, sort of being ahead of the game when it comes to this new civics mandate. It, it's not like you're behind the eight ball on this. It's like, oh, we can do that. We got that one. I mean, we mm -hmm. can expand on it. But, yeah, we've, we've already done a lot, and I just wanted to recognize that. Thank you. That. Appreciate it. We have a lot of strengths to build on, right. I think, mm -hmm. in, in preparing to, to meet the requirements of that legislation. And we, we should really welcome that legislation. I think it's really important. Excited yeah. about it. All right. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much, everybody. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yes. Nice job. All right. So, having heard the report, I'm going to remember this time that we have to act as appropriate on this <laughs> and vote. <laughs> I can't forget the other four that I was here for. Um, so, do we want to have a motion to? Accept. A motion to accept the improvement goals for the high school uh, for the year 2019-2020. Right. Second. Second carry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The ayes have it. Approved. Thank you very much. All right. Um, moving on to item 7.2. Um, to discuss the indicators that will be used to evaluate the superintendent and to act as appropriate. So, everyone has in their packets the new rubric for superintendent and district administrators that was updated this July. And just by way of background, we now, um, Dr. Austin has, we've set Dr. Austin's goals under each of the four standards, and now we need to solidify the indicators that we are going to use to evaluate him against each standard. Um, and I think in the past, they maybe you used all of the indicators, but now um, they ask you to limit the indicators to, you know, focus on two 
one or two per standard. Dr. Austin and the executive board met a couple of weeks ago along with um, Dr. Austin's mentor to just go over these and the ones that are highlighted are the ones that um, we sort of spoke about that we thought sort of resonated and um, tied into what we thought would be good indicators for Dr. Austin's first year. So all of them, all of the indicators are important, but there were some things that we thought, now nah, that's, can you really do that your first year? Is that really fair to evaluate somebody against that in the first year? So, um, so that's the background on that. So I don't know um, if anyone has questions, comments, thoughts, agree with the indicators that are highlighted or thoughts about adding or changing any of those out. Everybody good? Yeah. Yes. They seem balanced. Okay. Um, do we want to vote on these tonight and get them on deck for Dr. Austin so he knows, so he won't be <laughs> waiting <laughs> to figure out how we're going to grade him? Come up. Exactly. I know. Now I know it's the answer. Um, one, one thing I wanted yeah. to ask. What, so one a part of our discussion was uh, as we went through these was also the evidence that we're going to be used to evaluate these things. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it might be a good idea that we all have an idea of what we had talked about and if anyone has any other input as to just so everybody knows what sure. we're looking at good when point. we go to evaluate. Okay. Um, so um, do you want to? I, yeah. I can, That'd be great. Thanks. Um, so it, for most of, they're all tied to his goals that, that we approved. So. Um, and for most of them, so for 1B1 student engagement, um, we talked about um, structure of the meetings with the principals, and we'll be able to see that from the agendas. Um, and so if, I think the, the main sources of evidence we had talked about were the agendas for the meetings with principals at, at the buildings, um, also school improvement plans, um, meeting documents, and um, a, a lot of them are feedback from the community and groups. So like the, communi the communication goal, um, all the coffees and conversations, um, all time PTO, Metco, and just community feedback. So those were the, for, I kind of pulled out what we, wrote down what we had talked about for each individual one, if, if we want to do that, but those were the kind of the big um, buckets. Thank you. Did, would, did you do this for each of the indicators? For, for, the, for yeah. the ones that are recommended, yeah. Um. So uh, I'm just thinking, like, if I sit here and try to s scramble to write down what you're telling us and we all end up with something slightly different, then would you be able to put it in writing for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Because that would be more consistent? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Because yeah. I already yeah. missed one of what you said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Yep. No, that, and that would be yeah. good to have them in writing because then we'll yeah. know when we're doing the evaluation. Okay. Um, well, it'd be good for <coughs> us to me. then be able to comment if we s think of something else. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. I just had a quick Ness, did you go to that session today? The today? No. Or, black, or was it? No. Right. Mask. No, I ended up having to cancel. Okay. Yeah. I had a work event. Okay. Mask had done a seminar on the new superintendent evaluation system and yeah. I was hoping to go I couldn't go and that's last Monday yeah. to yeah. go. Oh. <laughs> so I, that's what I think it was covered at the mass conference and Ness and I both went to it then um, yeah I didn't know if they're gonna have anything in addition to that but yeah yeah okay all right yeah um, I will make a motion to approve the indicators recommended for the superintendent evaluation mm -hmm. uh, second, second. Carlos, thank you <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Thank you. And then follow up, um, Carrie will give us. Thank you so much, Carrie. All right. Um, so, Dr. Austin, those are your indicators. You now know the questions that will be on the exam. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, all right. For, um, item number 7.3, there are a number of um, appointments um, at um, many of the schools, the high school, high school kindergarten at Foster, um, middle school, and PRS look like the ones that we have appointments made. Um, 7.4, we have a resignation of Jennifer Quirk, math tutor at Foster School. Thank you, Jennifer, for your time with Hingham. Um, item number eight, do we have any 48-hour items? No? All right, 
Great. Um, subcommittee and project reports. I will just go down the line. Start with Ness. Do you have anything? And if you don't have anything, it's fine uh, to say no. To school. We met right before the um, Thanksgiving break. We met on the 20th. They discussed the parent survey results from 2018 and 19 and then used that to formulate what they were going to do for their survey to go out for this year. They're thinking about changing the format so that they hope to get higher participation. Um, and then we, we discussed the questions that would be on that survey. Um, and that was, that was it. Okay, great, thanks. Libby, anything? Uh, so I met with the South School Council and um, uh, Mary Eastwood reported that they had a very successful buzz assembly uh, to honor the veterans in Hingham and they had the highest um, participation rate of veterans so far and they uh -huh. had so many that um, their seating was a problem and they're trying to figure out already what they're going to do next year to accommodate everybody. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, also that she's giving us a heads up that she's going to be requesting more money in the budget for more math tutors. Um, the uh, Hingham Education Foundation, uh, I mentioned these dates the, the last meeting, but I'll mention them again because they're important. Uh, this Sunday, December 8th, there's a family day at the Paragon Boardwalk from 12 to 3, and 20% of the proceeds goes to the Hingham Education Foundation and also to the Hingham Sports Partnership. So that could be a fun time and a good way to raise money. Um, on Tuesday, December 17th, they're having another event, Krigsman Yoga Exercising for Education. I don't have a time on that. And then, uh, this is a big one, Friday, April 3rd, will be the spring fundraiser. So keep those dates in your calendars. And then um, community outreach. I did successfully book a coffee with the superintendent at the senior center um, on February 12th, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. And uh, I am still waiting to hear back from Lyndon Ponds for Great. a coffee there. Thank you. Sorry, February 12th? February 12th, 9.30 a.m. 9.30. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Liza? Um, salary negotiations will cover an executive session. And for the master plan, um, before Thanksgiving, there were numerous visioning sessions for the community. There will be another one scheduled for December 11th, Wednesday evening, December 11th at 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. So anyone who has not joined, they are encouraging all boards and elected officials to join in. We want to hear from you, but also anyone in the public who has not participated yet. Um, we want to know what you would like Hingham to be like in the future and what you like about it and what you want to see changed. Um, so there's been some really great discussion, great ideas so far. Um, but I encourage you, I know it's another night out, but so Wednesday, December 11th. Thank you. I'm sending myself an email to remind myself. I haven't been able to get to any of them. It's been <laughs> so hectic. Uh, thank you, Liza. Uh, Dr. Ed? Nothing. All right. Carrie? Um, not much. Just um, the South PTO is going to be meeting on Friday morning, um, December 6th. So we'll be going to that. All right. Great. And Carlos, anything? Um, long range planning met uh, since our last meeting on, on the 19th. And now uh, tonight, we have uh, discussed uh, several items uh, from um, you know, an update on the scoreboard that is uh, in progress to be installed uh, before the spring. Uh, we all sat with that. Um, we discussed uh, building 179, building 12. Um, we heard an update on uh, on the master plan, master plan uh, for the schools, uh, making a lot of progress there, um, and uh, we are meeting again <coughs> on the 9th, where we will be visiting both Building 179 and Building 12. We have invited uh, several uh, stakeholders so they can see the buildings and, and, and come up with some ideas of what they think they could utilize those facilities for. Uh, this is from athletics to different departments within the schools. Um, and we'll be meeting in 
tonight. We also start uh, to look at uh, the capital budget. Our first number is up, you know, up to the number of $3 million is what we're looking for. Um, after we heard the, you know, the request from several uh, you know, um, schools requests, uh, so we are right now talking about uh, $3 million. So let's hope that we can uh, get uh, at least half of that. Um, what else? Um, anything else that I did not cover? Uh, members of the Long Range Planning Subcommittee uh, and John. <coughs> so that's that. Uh, I do have an update as a, the liaison to the legislature. So you all heard the great news that the governor uh, finally signed uh, that $1.5 billion, uh, you, know, um, you know, new measurement measure that will address, you know, several of the loopholes that we have, and, you know, transportation, Chapter 70, and so on and so forth. Let's uh, definitely hope that um, we get a chunk of that money. Uh, although we are a, uh, a community that uh, is doing much better than many other out there, we do hope that uh, we will capitalize on this. So that's a great news. And uh, with that, that's pretty much it. Uh, Hingham High School Council meet again on Wednesday the 4th, I believe. I believe it's the 4th. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Special Ed Subcommittee, I believe you're scheduled for December 11th for a meeting. I will send you both an email just to double check the time. I think we were thinking 10, 11 o'clock. Um, and then on Friday, Ness and I are both attending the METCO Directors Association um, conference um, in Norwood. So that I'm looking forward to that. It's a really it looks like a great conference with some really great workshops. Um, I know there's some superintendent breakout workshops, um, and there's a bunch of them on um, equity and just all the things that we're looking for here in Hingham. So looking forward to that conference. Um, and that is all I have. Um, with that, unless anyone else has any <coughs> reports, um, I would take a motion to adjourn to executive session. Do you want to? Yeah. Well, this, go ahead, go ahead, Liza. motion to adjourn to executive session. Um, not to return to page. open session, but we'll be back for the workshop. Um, for the purpose of approval of minutes of the executive session of the school committee held on November 18, 2019, uh, discussing matters related to the current HEA Unit A collective bargaining contract, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining position, and discussing matters related to the collective bargaining negotiations with the HEA Unit A for the 2020-2023 contract, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining position. Second. I'll second. Oh, all right, I'll give that to Libby. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and just one thing, we will return, we're going to break out to executive session and then we will reconvene. It is an open meeting. It is just not going to be televised. So we're having a workshop um, after this, but we will come back into session here. Um, at 8.30. Um, so with that just caveat, do I want to get a roll call vote? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned for now to executive session.